I need a new desk. I work at a lumber yard that's been in business for centuries. And we have desks and offices that <laughs> look like they came out of the 1800s. Big pedestal desks made out of walnut. Look beautiful, but they are not efficient for the modern workplace. Pretty much everything I do is paperless working on a laptop. So when I got a new office and thought came to, let's get a new desk, well, I got myself um, an uplift desk. This is one half of it. It's got a, a motor in it. This is the bottom and you hit the motor and it raises and lowers. So you get a standing desk and a sitting desk. Really, really nice. It's worked great, but it came with a laminate top. A laminate top that was meant to look like walnut. Great desk, loved the desk, loved the, loved the undercarriage, hated the laminate top. So I took the whole thing apart. I pitched the laminate top so that there was no going back. And now I'm gonna build a nice solid walnut top for it. So really what we're talking about is a slab of walnut on top of a metal base. Not a whole lot of woodworking here, but let's overcomplicate the entire thing. I've had this big old hunk of walnut for probably 15 years, and I've been kind of looking for the right project for it. This happens to be just about the right length that I want. I don't want a massive desk. I want it to be about six feet long. And guess what? This is six feet long. Unfortunately, however, it is only, what, 22 inches wide? 22 inches, I say only, that's a wide piece of walnut. But if you look at the desk, this is the mounting bracket for the desk itself. Well, there's a mounting hole and there's a mounting hole. Those are too wide. They're probably 23 inches on center. Yes, so I need more width to this. The problem is I don't, want to glue up something. I want to embrace the fact that I've got this wide piece of walnut. So I need to figure out a way to add width without making it look like I added width onto this wide plank. Now you can see kind of the finished product I was going for. 
The holly is a stark contrast to the dark brown walnut. So it kind of acts as like a reset button. What I wanted to do is kind of give the idea that I had one solid slab. And if you look real close, you can see that the grain obviously is not the same as you move across the holly lines. But the brain doesn't really care. It sees that holly and it resets and starts over past it. In fact, because there's such a stark contrast with a holly, that's the focal point of this top. Your eye is drawn to that. And as far as the brain's concerned, it's all one bit of walnut. The wal walnut is the background to the holly that pops down here. So I'm not hiding the glue line. In fact, I'm making it very obvious, here's the glue line. And because of that, nobody else really cares. You're kind of hiding the fact that it's not a solid slab in plain sight by throwing that punctuation in there. In the end, I think it looks really good. So now I just gotta glue it up. Teach a man to fish. You've heard the old dad dish. Learn skills to get yourself free. Get your kicks by getting back to the basics. Build your masterpiece. Make a few mistakes. Now that I've got one wide slab, I'm going to flatten the whole thing out and essentially get it ready for finish. One of the things that I did here was the parts that I added onto the slab, I made a little bit thicker. This way I can focus on bringing just this narrow area down in line with a much wider slab, getting it flush and not having to plane the whole thing as one entity. In other words, not have to lower and flatten the entire surface. I did some flattening work on this slab before I even started turning on the camera. I know that this is relatively flat. It's certainly flat enough for the purposes I'm using it for. So the goal is to flush this out, switch away from my heavier use plane, and move to something like a smoothing plane and just focus on getting it pretty from there. On the bottom of this, I want a one inch by one inch chamfer all the way around the perimeter. So once I mark it out, I'll remove the bulk of the waste with a draw knife. And then finesse it right back to my lines using a jack plane. Now across the grain is the same story, but now I use a heavy skew on the draw knife and the plane, and this ensures I get a good, clean, finish ready surface. On the top of this, I wanna keep it as square edged as possible, but I definitely don't want a sharp edge. So I'm cutting a tiny chamfer and then following up with my number six hollow to slightly break the edge and make it much more comfortable in use. To be honest, I almost left the uh, kind of hand-hewn draw knife chamfers on the underside of this. I really like that look, and I actually left them that way for a couple of days. But the more I thought about it, just 
Between the steel base and kind of this contemporary racing stripe, the hand-hewn look just didn't mesh with the design. So I did decide to flatten them out with the hand plane. That being said though, I am going to leave the slightly scalloped texture left by the four plane on the underside. I just love the feel of this. So with pretty much all of the woodworking done, it's time to think about attaching this to its base. I take some time to center the base on the underside. I'm going to set it so they're about four inches from each end of the desktop. Now I use a Vix bit just to line up the holes in the hardware and drill right into the underside of the top. Now this is going to lock everything in place. So I'm going to come back with a chainsaw file and slightly widen the holes on the trestle of the hardware. This will allow me to screw into the centerpiece, but then the two flanking holes will be a little bit wider to allow expansion and contraction of the top throughout the seasons. Now between the base and the top, I'm gonna to add these little felt feet. These are the things that go on the bottom of table legs and chair legs to prevent scratching up your hardwood floor. This tiny bit of padding, I kind of find it offers like a damping between the metal base and the top. Then I'll screw everything tight, flip this sucker over, and I've got a desk. Well, all right. I now have a desk, or I suppose something that doubles as the slowest amusement park ride. It says the motor can lift up to 320 pounds. There was a time, folks, when this motor would not have been able to lift me, but uh, here we go. Woohoo! All right, that's enough. Take that back down. So, major construction, let's bring it back into frame. Major construction is done. Got a little bit of cleanup to do before I apply the finish. But tune in next time, and I'm going to really overcomplicate this by adding marquetry to the top.